philosophers and scientists regarded that the brain secretes thought in the same way as the liver secretes bile. Since then, we improved enormously our knowledge about the functioning of the central nervous system. But the exact location and the way of the internal organization of our feelings, our intellect, and even the spirit itself still remains a huge mystery. In this speech, I want to encourage you to mental workout, to think about how to improve the capability of your own cognition and therefore improve the quality of your own life. Our brain is a magnificent organ. It is the most sophisticated and complicated matter in the whole universe. It means there is nothing out there in the whole world and beyond that is more complex and incredible than the human brain is. And no wonder it controls everything inside and outside of us. So, for all of you today who hadn't had a chance to see it live, I brought here a live specimen of a human brain which can you also see on the photo. This particular anatomical specimen here is now dead. Of course it's dead, it's not alive. <laughs> but it's a little bit gooey and disgusting, I know, uh, but I had to bring it. So even though it's dead, it contains 100 million, billion neurons. And this is just a half of brain, another half is there. But just for you to understand a little bit better, what does it mean, this number 100 billion? If you put 100 billion sheets of paper on top of each other, it would be 10,000 kilometers high. 10,000 kilometers. It's like I'm digging a hole from here, where I'm standing right now, to the other side of the Earth. That's the distance of 10,000 kilometers. Somewhere around New Zealand we would end up. So, aside all these countless neurons and countless synapses and connections between them, we are still not using it enough. We are wasting its precious function. We are allowing the currency to take us to random places without ever noticing the time passing by. We are letting our brain hibernating. But what if we try to change this? What if we try to push our neurons to work harder? Would that make any sense? I promise you it would. I promise you it would bring you happiness, pride, sense of meaning, and power. You know, some people have this horrible experience of having their brain being sick or damaged. And there are many horrible diseases out there. For some of them, neurosurgery can help people suffer less. And even though we, the brain surgeons, can help, the majority of people that are not medical professionals, they, they think um, that the brain surgeons are a little bit um, psychopathic or weird or definitely not completely normal. But this is not the point. I will show you a video now after which you will think even worse about us. So, now you can see the OR here and the patient in the middle and all the crowd inside, and you can kind of realize that there are many things happening, uh, everybody has their own job. And I want to show you how it looks like when you operate on your patient, which is being away. 6, 47, 48, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49, 49
My mom's name is 24 and 26. Okay. That's what she said. My husband's name is 26. My name is 8th of April. Okay, so she is a little bit confused, as you can see. Uh, it probably has to do something with the surgery, with her disease, and with the testing of her brain. But this is kind of what it looks like. And the point of this video is just to show you the tiny glimpse of the complexity of work that needs to be done to treat a human brain. And our work is hard, and it should be hard, and education should last long, and blood and sweat should be spilled in the process. But even though being a very tough path, it can be the greatest and most satisfying choice for some. I think that you should never waste your brain, and not to mention harm it on purpose, by, for example, using alcohol and drugs. You know, I think you can save your brain. You can take care of it. You can improve your brain. How? By creating new ideas by thinking in new ways, by asking yourself endlessly the questions like, what is my opinion about this? You hear for some situation and you ask yourself, what do you think about it? Do I agree on this matter? Is this what is right? What do I want to know more about this? Ask this to yourself, not to other people, to yourself. Is this what is making me happy? Please remember this from time to time. And long time ago, in the Middle Ages, and after the long periods and eras that led to the illumination, the idea of enlightenment came along. And what is this? The idea of enlightenment is that all the answers lie within us, that the man is the center of all knowledge, and all problem solutions lie in his head, in our heads. So, just to show you an example of something that came out from my head, and it could easily come out from your head as well, this is the mental map of this speech that I'm do giving you right now, to, to make it remember a little bit better. It doesn't matter that you see all the details, just a general picture. And for the impatient ones, just for you to know, we are here right now, not much to go. So it's an example of how can you maybe encourage your brain to work more. And especially for you who are students, I want you to remember that you are the ones that are valuable. You should never forget about your capacity about the vast, idea, the vast possibilities that you have in front of you and all the ideas that you could have. And you're more important than any kind of president of the universe or director of the galaxy or some important person. You are more important. Your brain is better than theirs and your future should be brighter. Please think about this. Please influence on your own flow of thoughts, because brain functions can move, change, and develop. And there is a whole new term about this whole science of neuroplasticity. 
And neuroplasticity means that the brain is not a static material. Its function and even anatomy can change by our own conscious actions. It can really change. So, I think that everything can be a platform for success. Everything can be a platform to improve your potential. Any kind of path, any kind of idea, any kind of lifestyle, profession, you can go in whatever direction you want. If you use your potential, you will succeed. But let me go back to the question, what if we regard some people smart and others not so smart? Or at least, why do we perceive them so differently? Why is that so? I think this is very simple. Smart people are using their brains, and the not so smart ones are letting their brains be in a vegetative state. Smart people learned how to do this as soon as when they were children. Average healthy humans' IQs do not differ that much. And genetics is overrated. Even an average kid with no special natural talents can become a rocket scientist. I mean, it's not brain surgery. <laughs> no, this is not the point. The point is that uh, he can become whatever he wants. He can be whatever he wants with right parents, a lot of love and dedication, and uh, right environment, healthy environment, environment that is nurturing for him all, himself and his well-being. But on the other hand, even the most brilliant child, with the incredible capacity of his brain cells, with, with imagine, unimaginable intellect, he will never succeed, he will never accomplish anything, if he's raised in poor conditions, alone, with no guidance and no support whatsoever. Remember about this. Do you think that I would ever be the first woman to conquer such an alpha male field such as neurosurgery in a rather patriarchal country such as Croatia, if I didn't use the whole potential that I had, and if I didn't use the most of my brain, if I didn't push myself every time not to give up, if I didn't believe in myself and then convince others to believe in me, and give me the opportunity to join in. I sure wouldn't have even dreamt about becoming a neurosurgeon if you ask many distinguished professors just a few years back. And some of them even now think the same. Yes, they do, unfortunately. Do you think that I would ever go to France to work as a full-time neurosurgeon without previously ever learning the French language. Yes, I went there, I didn't speak French at all. I went to France to be a neurosurgeon. I, I survived somehow, I, I did it. I, I don't remember how anymore, but I'm here, I'm alive. And I sure wouldn't have even been expecting a baby. This is my baby, I'm pregnant. If I didn't <laughs> believe without, of course, giving up on any, any aspect of my career. Nothing, I didn't want to give up anything. And the man responsible for the, for the <laughs> picture. <laughs> and I sure wouldn't ever be celebrating my 34th birthday in such a wonderfully peculiar way as is standing here today, in front of you, giving this speech, and believing I have an idea worth spreading. All this wouldn't be possible if I didn't believe and use the potential of the brain, of my neurons and synapses that God gave me. So please, appreciate your life every day by reminding yourself what you have here inside. Show gratefulness by using your head. You owe it to your brain. Think about it. 
Thank you.